Is it really necessary to read multiple massive medical books from cover to cover to do well in medical school? Or is the use of any book relevant in a time where we have lecture notes that are concise and able to provide high yield information for our exams? Well, in this video, I'll share my thoughts on this topic as well as four books I wish I knew about when starting medical school. Well then, let's get started. Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Shreyas Vinayak and I'm a junior doctor currently working in NHS England. So during my time as a medical student, I always enjoyed using the old school method of studying from giant medical books. This is mainly because for my method of learning, I prefer to really understand what I'm studying as opposed to just reading and memorizing snippets of the bigger picture. Some people are able to retain and make sense of information this way, but I always found it hard to learn something new without understanding them in greater depth right at the beginning. For this one main reason, I found books like Guyton for Physiology and Robbins for Pathology really enjoyable. I sound like a massive nerd, but even though I spent a lot longer covering a single topic, I was able to retain the information for a lot longer as well. But then again, we don't always have the time or energy to cover a thousand pages in every subject and memorize every bit of it. So that is why in this video, I want to share with you guys a couple of comprehensive medical books that can really make a difference in your understanding and appreciation of the subject and will definitely be helpful in the long run. I won't cover this in any particular order, but I will highlight which books are more suitable for the year you're in. So the first book in today's list is the always handy and reliable Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. I'm sure most, if not all medical students would be quite familiar with this book by now. Especially if you're in your clinical years of medical school, one of the few things you're advised to carry around with you on the wards is your stethoscope, as well as this book. Even though you're never going to have time to refer to it at any point because you'll be too busy doing other things, it's always nice to have this by your side, more like a safety blanket. I have relied heavily on this book during my time in fourth year as well as for my final exam. So why am I telling you guys something that you already know? Well, the general consensus would be to only start using this book during your clinical years and clinical placements. Whereas I'm here to tell you how this book is the perfect companion for your time throughout medical school and that's independent to the medical school structure or the year you're in. If you've never had the time or opportunity to refer to the Oxford Handbook, it essentially presents clinical information that is easy to remember, revise and implement on the wards. It provides advice on how, when and what needs to be done in each clinical diagnosis and is complemented with pictures and diagrams. This is truly an invaluable resource for medical students. Now the reason why I would suggest you incorporate this from first year is because of two main reasons. Firstly, it's because of the direction in which medicine is being taught and examined in many universities now. Previously, the teaching structure was split into preclinical and clinical years. This is where you're forced to learn the basic sciences of the human body, including anatomy and physiology, before you progress to learning the management and clinical aspects of disease later on in your medical school. However, most universities now have taken the approach to implementing more clinical teaching during the early years of medical school to allow for more clinical exposure to patients as well as better understanding of a disease. So incorporating this book into your study plan will not only improve your overall comprehension but help you prepare better for your exams. Another reason why this book is useful is because studying how the body functions, learning how a disease affects our physiology and memorizing different types of microorganisms can be dry and boring, especially in our preclinical years where we are not taught how to treat and manage a patient, which is the exciting part of medicine. It sort of is like sitting and watching a Christopher Nolan movie for the first two hours and waiting for a couple of years to reach the climax. Although there's a significant amount of information that needs to be absorbed within the first two years of medical school, complementing it with this book will not only help you understand better, but also gives you a better overall picture when you're trying to put the pieces together. So what I did when I was in medical school was when I studied a particular chapter in pathology or studied a certain class of drug, I would just use this book to quickly flip through and review when that certain medication would be given or the signs and symptoms of a certain type of pathology. This definitely helped me solidify my understanding and I'm sure it can help you guys as well. 
The second book that I'd recommend is A First Aid for the Basic Sciences. I'll be honest, this book is my favorite from today's list. A lot of people confuse this book for the first aid for USMLE Step 1, which is also a really good comprehensive book that you should consider. The only difference is the basic sciences are slightly thicker and a less concise version of the Step 1. I feel that this book sort of has the best of both worlds, in the sense it has a significant amount of basic sciences, but also incorporates a huge chunk of clinical medicine which gives you an overall picture in one single resource. The template for this book is quite similar to the first aid for USMLE. It not only breaks down high yield information into a point by point basis, but also adds mnemonics and clinical correlation cards to help you retain information a lot easier as well. This is just a breakdown of the cardiovascular system and as you can see, it covers the bare basics from embryology all the way to the clinical aspects of investigation and management of a disease. Although it is tailored to the American guidelines in terms of management, it does cover the mechanism of action as well as side effects of each drug which coupled with your country's guidelines can be the perfect combination for exam preparation. I only discovered this book in my third year of medical school but it still helped me immensely in my clinical years as it was my main resource while I use other books such as Kumas and Clarks occasionally. I'd highly recommend this book to anyone in medical school, even those of y'all who are in your final years. The last two books in today's list is going to be more focused on pathology. So one of the few books that most of my friends have used and sworn by is Pathoma. Pathoma is a pathology book that is quite commonly used among medical grads that are interested in sitting for the USMLE, which is the entrance exam to the States. One of the advantages of this book is that it is accompanied with 35 hours of video recording which go through and complement the book really well. Essentially, the videos provide extra information that coaches you through the contents of the book. It covers the basics of pathology as well as high yield information in a simplistic manner that is easily understandable. Trust me, after trying to study Robbins for the first couple of years, you would want something to make it as simple as possible as well as make your life a little easier. Although it is geared more towards USMLE, I would still say it is perfect for medical students in their preclinical years. The one main gripe I had with this book was the lack of clinical medicine integration. It covered the basics really well but lacked the pathophysiology of diseases. And that is where our fourth book comes into play. So the rapid review for pathology is another book that I came across during my time in third year. This book is also highly recommended for USMLE step 1 purposes. Similarly to the video recordings in Pathoma, this book is accompanied with audio recordings which go hand in hand and cover the contents of the book. I definitely found it slightly tricky at first to keep up with those audio recordings as I was not used to it, but they are definitely useful and I recommend you guys check it out. So the one main difference between Pathoma and this book is the content that it covers. So the rapid review covers mainly pathophysiology, whereas Pathoma focuses more on basic pathology. Which one is better? Well, it depends. If you're in your first two years of medical school, I'd highly advise going for Pathoma. Whereas if you're in your later years, I'd advise going for the rapid review. Why would anyone use a pathology book during the clinical years of medical school? Well, the contents of this book covers a big chunk of clinical knowledge and information that really helped me during my time on the wards in my 4th and 5th year. The book has the ability to seamlessly work basic concepts into conceptualization of disease pathology. The way it ties two and two together make it a lot easier to understand concepts. Another thing that I really appreciate in this book is the amount of pictures and diagrams that are included to help you understand certain pathologies as well as their clinical findings from peripheral blood smears all the way to the gross clinical manifestation of sarcoidosis. The book provides a comprehensive view into the world of high patient presentation without having to seek out Dr. House's clinic of obscurity. These were the books that I advised my brother to review when he started his journey into medical school. It has tremendously helped me and I'm sure it will be beneficial to you guys as well. Let me know in the comments down below if there are any books that you guys absolutely love and swear by and I'll definitely check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, hit the like and subscribe down below. Check out my previous videos on productivity and insightful tips into medicine. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter with the links down below as well. I hope you guys are wearing your mask and staying safe out there and I'll catch y'all in my next video.